Welcome to Human Physiology and your first day of class. I am Dr. Harvey and I will be your teacher for this semester. And you can contact me through Canvas. You can contact me either through my VVC email or you can contact me on, at this extension. Now before we start talking about physiology itself, I'm just going to change my screen really fast and we're going to go through your syllabus and talk about things that are required for you. And then we're also going to go through your Canvas page so that you can see how the class is set up. So again, this is Bio 231 Human Physiology and I'm Dr. Harvey. And when you look at your syllabus, you'll also be able to see uh, your course section will be on there, and as you scroll down, you'll also find on this first page the days that you have, uh, vacations, that kind of thing. Now, as you go to the second page, you will be able to read the course description, and of course this is uh, an a uh, course that introduces you to the concepts of physiology, which of course we'll start talking about today in lecture. And then you can also read the st student learning outcomes. These are all about the things that you're supposed to know by the time the class is over. Now you should already have been screened for your prerequisites, which would include a chemistry class at the college level, and then of course a biology class, which could be any of the bio series 201, 202, or you probably more likely took bio 100 and 107 or 107, you don't have to have both. And then anatomy, which is your bio 221 here at VBC. And then of course, attendance, you're not attending in person. However, there is a lot of work in physiology. This is not an easy class. It does require quite a bit of your time and effort. So you just need to make sure that you're staying up on your video lectures. And what I would suggest to you is if you're going to um, do this class appropriately, I would suggest that you act like this class is either a Monday, Wednesday, or a Tuesday, Thursday class, and you watch your video lectures on those days. So you kind of set up a calendar and say, okay, this would have been a Monday, Wednesday class anyway, so I'm going to watch my video lectures on Monday, Wednesday. You cannot pass this class and receive a good grade if you are not watching the video lectures. I have found several students have told me that they tried to take this class online and they never watched a single video lecture and they couldn't understand why they failed. Okay, so you can't, you just can't pass physiology without watching the lectures. Now you do have the ability to withdraw and you can drop this class and there are certain days where you're able to drop the class but after certain days you're not able to do this anymore and so you want to make sure that you're looking on WebAdvisor when is the last day to be able to drop the class or not. Now as far as the lecture exams are concerned we're going to have four separate lecture exams in this class and that includes the final and just so that you know the final is not cumulative and so in case you don't know what the word cumulative means it means the final exam is not going to go over everything you learned during the entire semester. What the final exam is going to cover is it's just going to cover the last few chapters of the course. Now during the test, if at any time during the exam, because of course it's online, right? If there's some kind of glitch in Canvas, you need to email me immediately. Don't wait a couple hours. Don't email me the next day. And what I recommend is that you take pictures of your exam to be able to show me this is what I did and there was some kind of glitch and maybe you weren't able to finish the exam, but at least we have something to show that you were doing what you were supposed to do, okay? And that's really important. Now we will also have quizzes and labs. We'll have some lab write-ups. And when we get into Canvas, I'll show you all of those things. And of course, everything is graded and your grades are on a typical scale. 
90% is an A, 80% is a B, and so on. We will have announcements, and I will send those to you as regular updates, letting you know what's going on, if there's anything important that you need to know, any kind of upcoming projects or class concerns. And for you to get in contact with me again, it is uh, best for you to email me through Canvas and not through the VVC email system. And it would be really important when you do email me, okay, it's really important <laughs> because I, have, I get a lot of emails, okay, so I get hundreds of emails a week. So sometimes I don't know which class you're in, and sometimes you'll email me and you'll say things like, oh, this assignment wasn't working. Well, try to be as specific as possible. Tell me which assignment you're working on. Tell me which thing didn't work for you or what you need help with because then I can email you back. Because usually, if you don't, what I'm going to do is email you back and go, I don't exactly understand which assignment I'm trying to help you with. Okay, so just the more specific you can be, the better it is. So we will also have discussion boards as well, and your discussion boards are very specific. So you want to make sure you're reading all of the directions for the discussion boards. And I want you, really important, because you're going to get counted down if you don't, I want you to make sure that you're responding to at least two of your fellow classmates. So you're going to uh, answer your discussion board. And then you're going to make sure that you respond to two classmates. Now, here's another issue. Don't wait till the last second to do your exams or your quizzes or your discussion boards because if Canvas glitches, I'm not going to give you the ability to do this again because here's the thing. I'm going to take into consideration if you're answering your questions at, let's say, 11.55 p.m. and it's going to cut off at 11.59 p.m. anyway, I don't think you're going to be able to finish answering all these things in four minutes. And so I'm not going to give you the opportunity to answer them. So make sure you're finishing your quizzes, your discussion boards in a timely fashion so that if a glitch does occur, I'm going to be willing to say, okay, yes, I see this was an issue. Thank you for emailing me right away. I will help you with this, okay? So be aware of that. However, there are no makeups for quizzes, there's no makeups for labs, there's no makeups for discussion boards. If you have a school approved excuse, I will allow you to make up an exam. However, I won't allow you to make up the others, so keep on top of things. So, the way that I have the classes set up is that modules will open on a particular day and then you have a week to respond to those modules. And so again, I will show you in a few minutes how that is all set up, but you can read a little bit on here. But you'll also see it on your calendars on uh, Canvas as well. If you do have any special needs and you require any ADA assistance, please make sure that you are contacting uh, people at VVC in order to figure out how, the best help that you can get. And if you're not sure who to contact, please email me and I will help you as best as I can as well. And we've already talked about this. Don't cheat, okay? I don't have anything else to say on this. Uh, and that includes plagiarism. So be very, very careful when you're taking things from the internet, okay? that you're not plagiarizing things, okay? And you should, by now, you've taken English classes, you should know uh, how to paraphrase, you should know how to be able to do this so that it would not be considered plagiarism. All right, and then the best thing about the syllabus of all, and aren't they cute? There's my bloodhound puppies. All right, so enough of all of the syllabus and all that kind of good stuff. Let's talk some physiology. And physiology basically is the study of the function of plants and animals in their normal state. So you've taken anatomy already and what you studied in anatomy was all about form. 
Physiology is all about function. How do things work? How does the human body work? And that's what we are going to discuss in this class because this is all about human physiology. Now you can see the picture below. This is how we're going to go through the physiology class. So physiology really is a lot about chemistry. Now don't groan. I, I know how most of you feel about chemistry and I get it. Uh, usually if you have a biology physiology brain, you don't really have a chemistry brain. Uh, some of you will be lucky to have a brain that really clicks with both, but most of us, including myself, aren't really chemistry brains, okay? I do have a degree in chemistry, but it's not my most fun subject. But to understand physiology correctly, we do have to review some chemistry, and so we're going to really start with that. And we're going to go over atoms. And again, this is going to be a quick review for you just to kind of refresh your memory. We'll talk about molecules and then we'll move into the cell. Now, the cell is all about chemistry. So we're going to use some of that chemistry to describe what's going on with the cell and then to talk a little bit about tissues. And then we're really going to jump into the organs and we're going to talk about organ systems and how all of those systems work together to make a functioning human being because, of course, that's what this is all about and that is what is very important. Now, we're going to try to make this class interesting and so we're going to talk about what we call teleology and we're also going to talk about mechanisms. So, teleologically speaking, it's all about why do things exist? Why do things happen? And mechanistically speaking, it's all about what's the purpose of this? How does it actually work? How does it function? What are the processes involved? So, we're going to try to talk a little bit about both. It does make it a bit more interesting that way. And so, for, for instance, okay, so we're going to talk about how do you breathe? But then, why do you breathe? Why do you even need to breathe? And you think, oh, well, that, of course, is just easy. But really, is it? Because, for instance, I have a very good friend who works for NASA. And one of the things that he's been working on for a number of years is to try to figure out a process whereby humans don't have to breathe. And wouldn't that be important to not have to breathe or maybe not even have to breathe so much uh, if you're living on Mars? Or let's just bring it back down to Earth. What if you have somebody who, let's say, uh, has a heart attack at home and they stop breathing? Is there something you could do to keep that person alive while they're not breathing, not have to really worry so much about CPR, uh, and can I get them breathing again before you actually get them into the emergency room? And the answer is, um, my friend has actually developed an artificial blood. And this artificial blood has some chemicals in it that allows you to put a lot of oxygen into this blood so that while the person is not breathing, they don't actually have to breathe. So if I can infuse them with this artificial blood while I transport them from their home to the hospital, I can keep them alive with this oxygen from the blood and they don't even have to breathe. So we're going to talk about all of that as we go along and of course how does our blood flow? How do red blood cells transport oxygen? And are all of these actually that important anymore with all the new chemistry that's coming out? So why does your blood flow? Why do you have to have this oxygen? What's going on with all of this? We're going to try to talk about all these different things through the various different organ systems to try to make all of this interesting and, of course, make sense to us. But I want you to know that one of the major concepts in biology, physiology, doesn't matter what it is, is homeostasis. Now homeostasis is all about the balance of the body. So you want to make sure your body is able to stay in balance, to stay consistent, and to not go too far out of balance. Now, of course, every day, all day, our body goes out of balance. So for instance, I'm sitting here right now talking to you and I have a particular blood pressure as I'm talking to you sitting down. But if I were to stand up or if I were to lay down, my blood pressure changes. And that blood pressure change is taking me out of homeostasis. 
but is that necessarily a bad thing? And the answer to that is no, because you can go out of homeostasis for a short period of time and our body has multiple different mechanisms that help bring us back into that homeostasis. And for instance, one of your essays, which is going to be in exam three, is to explain the process of how we maintain that blood pressure when outside forces are trying to take us out of homeostasis. So for instance, I'm going to give you a scenario where a person is bleeding internally and their blood pressure is falling because of that. What's that person's body doing trying to keep the blood pressure at a normal level? Because if the blood pressure falls too much, we're not going to survive, we're going to die from this. So we're gonna talk about homeostasis a lot in this class and we're going to discuss how homeostasis affects the various different systems of our body. Now, one of the ways that our body regulates homeostasis is through a process called negative feedback. Now, don't get too freaked out. We're gonna talk about negative feedback. It's a pretty intense concept and I don't necessarily expect you to get negative feedback right away. And we're gonna talk about it a bunch in all of our lectures as we go through. But negative feedback is the ability of the body to survive when something changes. And that means either an internal change or it could even be a change in the environment. And so when those changes occur, like I'm standing up, I'm laying down, uh, I'm bleeding internally, our body is going to do something to try to keep the internal environment somewhat stable. Bring it back to what it should be before that change occurred. So negative feedback is kind of similar to your thermostat at home. Okay, so uh, today for me, it's a pretty cold day, the wind is blowing, there's snow on the mountains, and so I have set my thermostat so that the heat comes on. Okay, so right now my thermostat is set at 65 degrees, but it doesn't stay perfectly 65 degrees in my house, right? I mean, that's just the way it is. So how the thermostat works is, if the temperature in the house falls below 65 degrees, let's say it falls to 64 degrees, then my thermostat is gonna click on and the heat is gonna start pumping and what that'll do is that'll make the temperature go up. And when the thermostat hits 65 degrees, my heater turns off. And then because the heater is off, the temperature is gonna fall. And again, let's say it falls to 64 degrees, the heater turns back on, brings the heat back up to 65 degrees. That is negative feedback. So the change in the environment, that falling to 64 degrees, signals my thermostat to bring the temperature back to 65. So with our body, let's say I have a certain hormone, and that hormone is supposed to stay at this level, whatever the heck that level is. But things happen. The hormone gets used up, whatever, and the level of that hormone starts to drop. As soon as it drops, my body goes, oh shoot, that's too low, let's make more hormone and we're gonna pump it up to the normal level it's supposed to be at. So as soon as it gets back to that normal level, the body stops making it. And then eventually we're gonna use it up and it's gonna fall down to a lower level, the body will click back on and bring the hormone level back up. You see the similarity between my heater, my thermostat, and making hormones in our body? It's really the same thing. That is the process of negative feedback. So basically in negative feedback, something goes down lower than it's supposed to be, no problem, the body does whatever it needs to do to bring it back up to the level it's supposed to be. So that's where the word negative comes from. Something's going down in the body, but the body brings it back up to the normal level. So the down part is the negative part. So 
let's just skip that. And this is the same thing I was just telling you with the hormones. So for instance, one of those hormones might be the thyroid hormone. So if the thyroid hormone goes down because we've used it up, the brain is responsible for telling the body, hey, look, we need to make more of this and those levels are brought back up. We're going to go through this whole process with the hypothalamus, the anterior pituitary, and the thyroid in a future lecture when we talk about the endocrine system. So you'll see. But I just wanted to basically tell you that the thyroid hormone is an example of a hormone that's levels can go down and then we can bring those levels back up through that negative feedback process. So you can watch this YouTube video and it just tells you a little bit more about the thyroid hormones. Now there is another type of feedback and this is called positive feedback. Now positive feedback is different. This is not helping with homeostasis. As a matter of fact, positive feedback helps to throw us out of homeostasis. It doesn't allow us to stay in that balance. It takes us out of balance. Now, Positive feed feedback can be very important. It's not to say positive feedback is necessarily bad as long as it's working well. So I'll give you an example. So let's say that I accidentally cut myself and now I'm bleeding. Now, of course, no kidding, I don't want to keep bleeding forever and ever. I want that bleeding to stop. So one of the things that uh, you know is floating around in our blood are these little things called platelets. And platelets are really, really sticky. And so as the blood, let's say I have a cut on my arm, right? And as the blood is coming out of my arm, platelets are flowing towards the surface. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna stick to the edges of that cut. And so you can see right here, for instance, in this picture, you can see these little platelets here. And there, this is where the cut was. And you can see the platelets are all sticking to the edge of the cut. Now, what the platelets are gonna do is they're gonna form something we call a platelet plug. They're gonna plug up that cut. So in order for them to do that, you need a lot of platelets. You can't just have a few. You have to have a ton of platelets to come in and plug up that cut. So the platelets, once they stick to the edges of the cut, they actually secrete a chemical that attracts more platelets. And more platelets stick to the edge of the cut. And then those secrete a chemical that attract more platelets. And they stick and they secrete a chemical that attracts more platelets. And more platelets stick. And they secrete a chemical that attracts more platelets. And more platelets stick. And they secrete a chemical that attracts more platelets. And you get the idea. You get a ton of platelets sticking and forming this plug, mushy mess all over where the crack or the cut is and it is plugging it all up so I don't continue to bleed until eventually my body can heal whatever that cut is. So the fact that some platelets came in and stuck and then they secreted a chemical that attracted more platelets and then those platelets secreted a chemical that attracted more platelets. And those chemicals were secreted that attracted more platelets and more platelets and more platelets. And you get the idea. That's why we call it a positive feedback. Because A stimulated B, B stimulated A again, and that stimulated B, which stimulated A again, and it just keeps going up and up and up. Now the only thing is, once you get so many platelets sticking, you need it to stop. There has to be what I like to call a shutoff switch, or you have an issue. I mean, imagine this for a second. What happens if platelets just keep sticking and sticking and sticking and sticking, and they never stop sticking? I have sticky platelets all throughout my body. I start getting clots everywhere, and this is not good. This is what we call pathological. It's not a good thing. I'm sick now. So anytime I have a positive feedback, something is going up and up and up and up and up and up in my body, but I have to have a shutoff switch. Whereas with negative feedback, something goes down, but I have to bring it back up to normal. Hopefully, you get that information and that kind of sort of makes sense to you. But again, remember, we're going to talk about both negative and positive feedback a lot in this class as we go along. 
And then there's a little YouTube video that you can also watch that helps to explain positive feedback a little bit better. This last slide uh, has to do a little bit more with your essay questions. And so I wanted to talk to you just a little bit, and again, I'm gonna talk to you a whole bunch more as far as your essays are concerned as we go along. But when I give you your essay questions, um, and I'm lecturing on them. I will very typically do these in uh, a format that's called a concept map. And a lot of times also it can be referred to as like a flow chart. So I'll write a point up and then I'll put an arrow and another point and an arrow. It just makes it easier when I'm lecturing to you. However, that does not mean you can do that for your essays. It is an essay question, so it has to be written out in essay format. It can't be written out in a flow chart or a concept map format. It has to be, and it not bullet points either. So sentences with periods and make sure that it's written out. And I'm not gonna count you down, but it really would be preferable if you wrote it out also with paragraphs as well because it just makes it easier for me to read. But I just wanna make sure that you realize you are not to be writing your essay questions the way I write them on the board. I write them more in shorthand. Your job is to write it out in longhand, to fill it fully out, to answer the question fully. It is as if you are answering the question as if you're the teacher now, and you're teaching someone else this concept who doesn't understand it. And I know we haven't really talked about essays yet, and it'll be a couple videos before you see those essays, but it's okay. I just wanted to kind of make this clear to you right now, okay? All right, so that is the end of your first video.